Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that it is coming, and now it is already in the world. Test the spirits. What exactly is John talking about there? Alright guys, today we're looking at discernment, what it is, and how not only as a Christian, but as a witch, you can use it to kind of keep yourself safe and make sure that you're practicing that, that good old spiritual stranger danger, you know what I'm talking about? So a lot of times when you hear Christians talking about discernment, they are talking about that verse right there, that specific instruction that says to test the spirits by basically asking them whether or not they believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, the problem with this, of course, is that um, as a witch, you're going to encounter many spirits who have radically different ideas of what's going on. I mean, even human beings have radically different ideas of what's going on if you compare between just Christianity and Islam. Muslims don't view Jesus as the literal son of God, but just another prophet. So, the idea of testing spirits by asking this one kind of, like, litmus test of a question doesn't even work on people. <laughs> And of course, obviously, I mean, if you are working with spirits that are outside of Christian theology, like say, if you happen to encounter spirits of a totally different religion, Norse gods, Greek gods, any of these, they probably won't even care to answer that question because it's not something relevant to them. Christian spirits, by all means, you can ask them these things. They'll look at you like you have three heads when you ask because the answer is an obvious yes for them, but the way religions work is very different than this kind of hard and fast that the first letter of John gave us here. If you really want to talk about discernment, you have to know something about the spirits you're trying to identify. So, for instance, if you know that Velis, the Slavic god of music and mischief and magic in the underworld, is associated, um, you know, by a man with horns, by Vishnivanka, that Slavic pattern, by masks, by, uh, you know, musical instruments and other such things, then if you start seeing all of these appear, you might get pointed in that direction. But discernment doesn't stop there. You don't see all those things and then just say, oh, yep, automatically that's Velis. Then you have to ask them identifying questions. So John was on the right idea in that letter when he suggested to ask specific questions, but you gotta get a little bit deeper than just one. For instance, if I wanted to make sure that I was talking to Velis, I would ask him, do you know Perun? What do you feel about Perun? Do you, you know, exist in these areas? Where are you from? What are you interested in talking about? Who have you had children with? What are those children like? You know, if I was thinking I was interacting with a god, I would be asking questions like that because they're pertinent to that god's lore. And this is not only a way to identify them and make sure you're talking to the right one, but also to block out any egregores, because egregores of certain deities, especially very popular ones like Greek gods, they only really know what is actively, like, commonly talked about. If you start asking deeper questions, they're not really going to get it, they're not really going to be able to answer accurately, and that's one way that you can tell, like, who's who. But again, there is an element of stranger danger, okay? So just because, um, you know, you're dealing with spirits doesn't mean the laws of common sense don't apply. They are strangers to you. You do not know them. They could tell you anything they wanted to. And the only way you're really going to be able to suss them out is if you can feel their energy, and if you can, you know, have enough knowledge in your pocket to be able to cross-reference and catch them in a lie, or just catch a obvious pocket of knowledge that they should have, things like that, that's how you figure out who you're dealing with and what's going on. Especially because many spirits are basically in charge of the same concepts, but in different cultures. So are you talking to a brownie or are you talking to a domovik? They're the same general idea across two very different cultures, and by being able to 
separate those cultures and ask clarifying questions, ask them what they prefer to do, what they like, what they want, you are able to see which you're talking to. Because while they're the same idea of like a house spirit and a, and a protector and someone who keeps the house in order, they act very differently. For instance, uh, a brownie does not want to be actually recognized. You just leave a small bowl of, you know, sweet honey and milk or something in the corner and then wordlessly throw it out the next day. The Domovik, on the other hand, wants respect, wants to be acknowledged, and will not take any food from you unless you specifically tell it that that food is for him. They're very different, even though they have a very similar function. I mean, honest mistakes happen when you're trying to identify a deity sometimes. You could think you're talking to, I don't know, maybe Artemis or Athena, and not realize you're actually talking to the Virgin Mary until you start getting very specific flashes, specific images, that have nothing to do with Athena or Artemis, but instead have something more to do with, you know, Mary, her crown, the color red or blue, rosaries, any kind of Christian iconography like that. So the way I typically uh, discern whatever spirit I'm talking to, just as I was talking about with Velis, you know, I'll ask those questions, but with Velis, you know, I didn't have to go through all that extra um, identification because I was already talking to Krisnik and Vesna, and I knew that whoever they were pointing me to had something to do with them. Obviously that was Velis. Um, but even still, if I am trying to identify a spirit, especially say when I do interviews with the gods, I will not try and force an image. Whatever comes through, comes through. And with angels, this is very tricky because people have very different descriptions of angels. So for instance, Uriel, he is described as wearing red and, you know, being of the sacred fire. But Damien Eccles describes him as having to do with winter and wearing green. So it's very different conflicting ideas and you just kind of have to let them roll through and show you what they're going to show you and make what you will of those images. Then you start asking questions about what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Half the time I interview with the gods is more or less an identification of who I'm talking to because if Uriel is giving me very specific, like, descriptions of what's going on in Exodus, then I know that I'm talking to the one that is in common thought, the Uriel that went through and checked the doors in Exodus. But I think as Christian witches, something that's very, very, very important to remember is that honestly, like eight times out of ten, whatever spirit just randomly pops into your space is not trying to hurt you. I have very rarely ever felt like actually threatened by something that was in my space. And even then, in the times that I have, like, half of them we can chalk up to just me being freaked out that there was anything there at all. Not that it was specifically something out to get me. As an example, one night I was going to sleep, and as I was just about to drift off, something about the darkness just felt very weird, and I didn't like it. And so I felt kind of my forearms light up with these prickles. Like, physically I was very, like, on edge about it. When in reality I should have stopped and wondered, like, is this an infernal divine? Because that's the way I actually identify Lucifer's around is when my arms light up like that. It could have been Lucifer, it might even have been Azazel, but at the time I was too freaked out so all I did was kind of just say like, if you're not of God, get out, leave me, leave me be. And it left. Which does confirm probably that it was an infernal divine of some kind that was not aligned with God. Oops. <laughs> Sorry to whoever I booted out. But in general, Discernment is really helpful, especially if you are engaging with other spirits, especially if you are engaging with ones that are not commonly known. Say you know things about an ancestor, um, and you're trying to connect with that ancestor. This is where identification is very helpful. Um, and the ways that I like to do it include, you know, meditation, tarot, and just asking specific pertinent questions that help me sift through, is it this deity from this culture, that culture, this angel, that demon. By doing that and asking those specific questions in whatever way that you use, be it tarot, be it meditation, anything else, you can figure out who's around and you can decide later if you want them there or not. Like I did, you know, at night. I said, uh, if you're not of God, I really don't got time for you, go. And they left. <laughs> and not every attempt at discernment is going to be successful. That's okay. Like, sometimes I felt that there's something around and I go into a kind of meditative space and I'm like, okay, what are you, what do you want? And I get these images that just like don't really make sense, that um, don't really point me to anything in particular. 
At that point, I'm just assuming it's a passing spirit who happened to bump into me, and I'm like, okay, on you go, little buddy. I'm, I'm gonna disconnect from that. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy whatever you're doing. Like, not everything is a sign, not everything is a symbol, not every spirit has something specific to say. It's okay. Sometimes they just happen to pop up like a dude next to you at the bus stop, and maybe they want to engage in some small talk, and then they get on the bus and they leave. It's literally as, as simple as that. And I think when you realize that, it's a lot easier to not be so uh, nervous around them. It's quite literally just like like a stray cat whirling up to you and like, you know, rub it on your legs and you're like, okay, very nice. Anyway, goodbye. <laughs> Discernment also doesn't just apply to spirits though. It applies to people. It absolutely applies to people. When you talk about that, uh, that gut feeling, that intuitive kind of unease about something, pay attention to that. <laughs> Definitely pay attention to that. If someone strikes you as someone who is, um, you know, maybe they're talking a little bit too boldly, maybe they're talking in too much, uh, hard, fast, like, this is it, and that's just what it is. Like, if they're giving language that doesn't allow room for discussion or other opinion, my discernment would tell me that this person doesn't quite... Either they don't know as much as they're trying to make it seem that they do, or they are grifting. They are being a grifter. Because unless someone has the facts and the evidence and the research to back up what they're saying so hard and fast, um... I don't like when people speak in absolutes. I would prefer people acknowledge that, um, you know, unless unless there's like an undeniable fact to back them up, that there's a lot more open to interpretation than they would like. But at the end of the day, discernment, very simply put, is just your ability to figure out what is going on around you. Your ability to identify any spirits, your ability to identify the signs and symbols that people around you are giving off, and what to do once you got that information. So with that in mind, I hope this kind of puts you a little bit more at ease when it comes to the idea of testing and discerning spirits, and I hope this also gives you some confidence to even challenge them in the first place, because I know for myself, I used to be really scared to even approach anything that I felt was around. I just immediately tried to shove it out, but now I'll just kind of roll up to it and say, um, hi, are you lost? What do you need? What are you doing? And that is the fun of discernment, so. With that said, I will see you guys around next week for our Archangel of the Month, and yeah, see ya! By the way, if you want to see these videos two weeks earlier, consider subscribing to my Patreon, where you not only get all these videos, but also recipe cards, uh, specific deity profiles, and lots of other interesting things to look at. Video tiers start at $10 a month, so definitely consider checking it out.